still here at uh, Prismic Studios with, with Berkir. So we did two first videos about, uh, well, your role as a technical director, and then we, we dig more into the technical aspect of, uh, you know, your role and how did you choose your technology and how does it work. And this video is about uh, CMS and how do you choose your CMS for your clients? Yeah. So how does that happen? Absolutely. Um, yeah, there are a lot of requirements uh, that, that basically make the decision of the CMS. There are like, if the client has to have a specific CMS, we, we basically just listen to that and, and uh, take that into account. But we try to get them into headless CMSs all the time. But, and that's just to future proof themselves. Yeah, so that's f for you. This is this is an important thing. Yeah, that, yeah. So that in the future they can still work and 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 change technology. What what is it future proof? Y what yeah, I mean, that, having it headless means uh, the code base can be detached, mm -hmm. so it's like not in, uh, dependent on any specific CMS. It's not a proprietary technology. It can be any technology. Yeah, right. but um, headless CMS is um, there are a lot of CMSs out there that are headless both open source and uh, uh, software as a service. And um, yeah, we, we used to use uh, both Contentful, we used to use uh, uh, Headless WordPress. Sometimes when the client like had to use WordPress, we, we proposed the option of, of having Headless WordPress. But uh, when we found uh, Prismic, it was kind of just, yeah, they have kind of everything we need. And uh, we, we've been ro rolling with, with them almost for every project. Like we have some edge cases, but but uh, they kind of fulfill everything that we need. I mean, we, we, we do. I mean, we pretty. No, but I'm very very glad to hear that. And then when we learned it about about Weno that you you guys are moving uh, into Prismic, we're very uh, glad because we really like what you guys do at Weno, and you know the perfection, the, the execution, all all what you do. It's the kind of this is how we imagine people doing with our with our software. I mean, we, we always try to kind of help people that do this kind of uh, level of, of uh, results, you know, level of it's yeah. a different level of, of perfection. And that we always imagine our clients doing that. We, that's what we want them to be doing. But I would like to get back to the choice of, so you tell if a client comes with WordPress already, okay? Mm -hmm. You tell them, okay, we can do um, uh, WordPress with an API. Yep. Uh, is it is it still like fine? What are the things that you'll be missing if you're doing this approach? So I mean, WordPress, uh, you could be opening can of worms, of right? I mean, you have all these different plugins. You have all the different uh, plugins that form basically the content structure. So we don't know what we would be getting into if uh, we, we were to go with a, a setup that we haven't seen before. Right. So there are a lot of unknowns mm -hmm. uh, with with WordPress because it's so customizable. And uh, they also like sometimes they they would think that oh if we go with our WordPress API we could still use this in this plugin, which is just not correct. You can't use the you plugins. can't use yeah. CEO plugin like it doesn't help you because it doesn't provide us with any data. Right. So yeah, that's the reason why we like uh, yeah maybe maybe it would be better to go with uh, with the headless CMS. Headless actually. CMS, uh, yeah. And actually, there's also the interaction between plugins that sometimes is unpredictable. Unpredictable, definitely. Mm -hmm. And some of them are like baked into the theme or like uh, the templates. Oh yeah, there's that too. Yeah. So yeah, there's that as well. And for instance, like whenever you uh, tell your customers about, okay, let's move to the headless CMS. Do you find often that they're resistant to this kind of decision? Do they try to learn about it? Do they like the choice? What what <coughs> what is their reaction? So my experience has been fairly positive uh, on, on most parts. It's usually the big players, big companies that uh, they tend to be pretty vendor locked in, and um, yeah. But but overall, all good good uh, good feedback. Okay, cool. Now, uh, can you explain to me the, the the maybe the workflow or of how you work with the with the headless CMS? What do you start with? What is the first thing that like you you're getting a new project? Mm -hmm. Who who starts with 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 a, with a headless CMS and what do you, how do you configure it sure. all these kind of things? Yeah, I mean it really starts with um, uh, for in in Prismic for example, uh, we have usually one developer who who goes in and creates a repo, uh, goes ahead and takes a look at the sketch file, different pages, mm -hmm. uh, finds similar components, and even if we have like a style style guide, takes all those components and create the slices for for all those components. The next step is to create all the different pages 
if if there are different pages, if some of them can be shared, um, he 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 or she goes ahead and 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 ma- makes those um, available for the others. Yes. Yeah. Um, but in, in the in the in the process of uh, you know you again you you were getting back to the topics that we talked about in in other videos that you break things into components. Uh, yeah. You said that you use slices that <clears throat> Prismi provide like for it makes you like it's like they correspond to components. Yeah. And then you go and implement them in in for instance Gatsby and React. Yeah, but the, but the beauty of having headless CMS you can uh, you can have one resource working in the CMS, setting up all the structure, everything, and one person data binding in, in the code base. Yeah, that's so. a, I, I also like it. Like as a teamwork, yeah. you don't have to wait one for the it's other. It's very nice to you start something, the other works, you can continue working, you yeah. start filling content, the others have the content. Yeah, and that's usually how we how we do things. So you have like designers, developers, and content writers working at the same time? Sometimes when, when mm-hmm. like we have uh, everything happening at the same time, it, it, that could be the case. And do you work like around the table or are you remote? Like how, how does it We, go? Uh, most of our developers are in Iceland while uh, our designers and uh, and uh, copywriters and, and so on uh, are in uh, uh, New York or San Francisco. Mm-hmm. It works very well for, for time zone purposes. Uh, when, when we are pretty much done for the day, like they wake up the next morning and they're like, oh, nice. whoa, what's happening? <laughs> Okay. This is so nice, yeah. And then, like for um, uh, educate, like for instance, if you chose a CMS and you you should hand it to the client right afterwards. Yep. Um, how does that process go? Like, is there is there a lot of education to be done, or like how? Yeah, how how do you when you hand uh, the project back to the to the client? You tell them, okay, you got the project. Now you can work. You work. You can work on on in your own. Yeah. Should they get back to you each time they want to modify something, or how does it go? No, it's a it's a good good question because uh, we we are very transparent. So from day one, we 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 allow the option of of the client to get access to our GitHub repo, to get access to Prismic and see how things are moving along, and if they want, uh, they can poke around and see what, what's happening in the C, in the CMS. Uh, and then later on, we could have like a good handoff call, like how we because. A headless CMS is like you could customize it like how you want it to be. Right. So you always have to do a little bit of uh, handoff mm-hmm. uh, talk. Mm-hmm. So usually in the end we do like okay, so this is how we set it up and how, how we think it's best to to manage all the content and so on. I do you think it's a, it's a lot of work, or do you have a team that does that, or just we use know? usually just sync uh, the the developers and and the client. Right. Yeah. And, and do you think like then develop, developers of the client they can pick up and start developing their own things on top of that? If if they have developers, uh, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, something but, that but, can but happen. they are already uh, kind of following along on on GitHub. See how everything is data binded. See how everything oh, okay. is because you you said that you're transparent, so you show them everything so they can follow uh, yep. during. Yep. Right. And the last thing I was I was thinking about um, for that uh, when you whenever you chose. Uh, you said you were using other things, and then you you suddenly said, okay, uh, at some point, you want to use Prismic. What is it in Prismic that we did that uh, it, it's interesting for us to know, right? Yeah. Uh, that that made you uh, consider using using our product. Uh, yeah, I think it's slices. I mean, that's slices. yeah, slices is it's amazing. I like because it just we can lay down the content. You have those blocks of uh, different elements, mm-hmm. and it just it matches so well with with slices. Um, yeah, and and you told me before that we should we should get get them to the different le- a different level. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll work on that. <laughs> and uh, so, um, well, maybe we can talk about that in in a, in a different video. Maybe. Cool. Thank you, Berkir. Thank you.